it's great, great to be with you this morning. Um, and I appreciate the, the invitation that uh, Dr. Julia Roberts extended to me. And, and when Dr. Julia calls, as most of you know, the answer is always yes. Is that right? It is for me. And, and Dr. Julia, I, I appreciate the, the opportunity to, to speak to this, this great audience this morning. The uh, content that we're going we're gonna to treat uh, during my part of the presentation, uh, again, is consistent with, with the title, Invent Yourself a Job. And hopefully, if you're not excited about the idea of inventing yourself a job uh, before the presentation, hopefully you will be afterwards. That's, that's my goal. Uh, and we have, I have uh, three, basically three components to this presentation. Uh, we're just going to take a brief look at the, the history of how our economy has progressed over the last two or three hundred years to make our modern, our modern situation, our current situation, the easiest, the simplest time in modern history for inventing yourself a job, for creating your future. And that's, that's the first part of what we're going to talk about. The second part, we're going to look at what are the dynamics that are, that are driving that and making that more possible today uh, than it's ever been in modern history. And the, and the third thing is, is we're going to talk about what are the attributes, the individual attributes, uh, the, the values, the, the principles that are possessed by individuals who demonstrate a higher capacity for inventing themselves a job and creating their own future. So that's, that's what we want to do. Before we do that, we're going to do a, a bit of audience participation. So get ready to stand up. Not yet, but get ready to stand up. If you've ever had an idea in your mind for something that would help others, something that would make the world a better place on some level, small, large, globally, if you've ever had that idea, I want you to stand up. Please, go ahead, stand up. If you've ever had that idea, something about something, man, if, if only we had this, that would really help people. I, I just know that would help people. That's great. You're in the right place, I think. Now, remain standing. If you've taken that idea and then you sort of took it to the next level where you said, I see how this idea could become a business, a service. I see that. I've got it in my mind. I've got that. Remain standing if you've, if you've gone to that next step. Okay. Look around. A few, few less standing. Now, remain standing. If you've taken that idea, you said, I've got an idea for something that can make the world a better place. I see how that idea can become a business. And now remain standing if you took the step to turn it into a business. Now, you guys remain standing. I want you to give those, those applause, those, those folks applause who are remaining standing. These are the people that after uh, today's sessions, these are the kind of people that you need to uh, be shaking hands with because you want to know, how do I take the idea that I have and turn it in, into, into a job? Now, it's not to say, and, and by the way, these people are, are, are the warriors among us. And we're going to talk a bit more about that. But it's not to say that the only, the only uh, channel for productively um, uh, making use of your creativity and your ideas, it's, the only, it's not the only way to do that by starting a business. But certainly, with, with the resources that you have today uh, and, and the abilities that are, that are manifest in our current economy and, and the way businesses operate, there, there, is, there, are, there are a few reasons why you can't take that idea that you have that says, I know this could make the world a better place. I see how it could become a business. And now to be able to take that next step in making it so. So thank you for, for, for that bit of audience participation. Now let's, let's talk about how we have gotten to where we are. Why is it that today it's simpler to start your own, own business, to create your own job, invent your own future uh, than it ever has been before. This is a, a picture that's, that's intended to, to harken us back to the Industrial Revolution. Doesn't this look fun? Does this look good? Uh, you know, th this, this represented 
200 years of progress, inventions that made uh, work, uh, manual labor more mechanical, more automated in a lot of cases, and it provided uh, just for a transformation of our economy, and it, and it happened over roughly a couple hundred years. That gave way to the, the, the post-World War II economy, where for a number of uh, decades, uh, roughly you know, 50 years or so, we then tra began to transition with the advent of automobiles, the interstate highway system, and, and lots of folks who had been in, involved in the workforce, we became more disparate, more spread out as a population. And then service jobs, we began creating neighborhoods and, and suburbs and subdivisions. And so service jobs uh, began to grow and, and flourished over that time period. But again, about 50 years or so. And then we have this guy. And, and you're sort of showing your age if you, if you raise your hand and, and tell me that you recognize this sock puppet. For the younger folks in the audience, maybe you've seen this, this guy or maybe you haven't, but, but he came to represent what was the dot-com economy uh, in, the, in the 90s, in the early 2000s. And, and that's, not, uh, that's not much of a compliment in retrospect to, to, to tell this guy that he is, he's the poster, poster sock puppet for the dot-com economy, because there was a lot of sort of, uh, th we, we had big, big dreams, big visions for what the internet was going to enable in the economy. But being in business school at that time, in that, in that phase, you know, we, we were kind of dumb about it, honestly. But, but it, 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 we, we were seeing what the internet was able to do, but one of the problems, and it's, and it's, uh, you know, appropriate that we're going to be talking about broadband and, and, and the expanse of telecommunications. One of the problems was that was only available, what the internet was capable of doing was only available to a select few people. And so we had these visions of what could happen when that became a technology that everybody could access, but until they could, uh, we had sort of false hopes. And so this is a business that was started that was called Pets.com. And they were just going to, you, you, you were going to be able to buy everything for your pet online. That's not, doesn't sound very revolutionary today. At the time, we were just saying, man, the internet changes everything. And we got so excited about pets.com. And then when I left business school, I, I happened to move to New York and was an analyst. And this was one of the companies that I analyzed. And I started looking, you know, behind, uh, behind the, the covers. And I saw things like, you know, they had revenue of $600,000 uh, in, in a year, but they had a marketing budget of, of 11 million. They spent 2 million, I think it was, on a Super Bowl ad. So we were just doing silly things at that time in that dot-com economy. And, and, and that, that didn't bode too well for, for Pets.com in, in this particular sock puppet. Thankfully, as the internet economy has matured, we've seen the advent of these companies that we all know so well. And they have come to represent the opportunities that we're going to talk about today. And so they've, they've demonstrated that as broadband, as companies like AT&T and others invest in broadband and, and, and make that available to the masses, that now we have opportunities to build businesses that are, that are more built on, on creativity, but also discipline and focused in, in, in true business principles. And so we've, we've been blessed uh, in, in just the last few years. Again, think about how this is funneling in, in terms of time. You had the Industrial Revolution that took you know, a couple hundred, then you had the next transformation of the service economy that took, you know, decades, and then you had the dot-com economy that, that, that swelled up and burst in a matter of 10 years, and now we've been living in the internet economy over the last several years. And thank goodness we have companies like this and, and, and hundreds of others uh, that we can point to and say, this represents the future uh, of our economy. And so with companies like this, We'll, and we'll, this is what we'll get into more, but these are the types of companies that have, have been created that now create opportunities for, for you to invent your, invent your job and create your future. And now we have begun what amounts to an economy represented by the internet of everything. And so not just companies like like those represented on the last, last page, and, and, and they are responsible for, for fundamentally help drive, to help, it, help drive the internet of everything. But now, literally, 
because the technology, because the bandwidth is available to, to, to nearly everyone, uh, and, and, it, and it will be universally available in short order to everyone across the entire globe, but it's, it's beginning to impact, or it is impacting every aspect of our daily lives, and not just technology companies traditionally, in the traditional sense, but every sector, uh, from healthcare, uh, certainly to education, certainly to how we, uh, how we communicate together and across, across boundaries. And so this, this is where we are today, and this is what, uh, what represents the opportunity of the future. And just by the way, I, I've been blown away personally in the last two weeks. I've seen uh, the intersection of arts and science and information technology and a couple different stories, healthcare stories, that involve 3D printing. Anybody, anybody else tracked with, with these couple of stories? One of them was in, in Louisville just a couple weeks ago, where the Speed School for Engineering worked with doctors who were performing, needed to perform a, a heart operation uh, on an infant, or, or, sorry, a toddler, uh, who had uh, some, some sort of aortic uh, disorder and, 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 and a number of things, but it was a very complex surgery, and the first thing they did was create a 3D replica of that little boy's heart. And so the surgeon could, could look at that replica, dive into it, and they did this based on hundreds of, of 3D images. And so then they could see exactly where to make the incisions, and, and it cut down on the number of cuts into that little boy's heart in the time that he was in surgery. And just literally two weeks later, his mother's reporting that he's, he's running around like a normal little boy, living a normal life, and she just, is, just can't believe how incredible that is. I think he had a four-day hospital stay. It's just amazing when you see those things happening. Another example was a, 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 an infant with, with a skull deformity uh, in, uh, in New York collaborated with engineers and IT professionals in Colorado to create 3D images of a skull that they could then take those uh, plastic places, plastic structures out, literally put those on, on his skull, trace the, the cuts that had needed to be ma made, and did that and performed that in an extraordinary fashion. Incredible uses, applications of creativity uh, in, 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 in science, in information technology. These guys know about it. These are the founders of Snapchat. In 2012, these guys had, had created a company that had been around for, for a, n a number of months, a matter of months. I think it was about 18 months. They were acquired by a company called Facebook for an amount of money that, that was about a billion dollars. How many employees do you think they had? Hundreds? Thousands? Close. It was in the teens. They had 16 or 17 employees. When, when they, about the time they sold their company for a billion dollars to Facebook, the, a company that I had grew up in my, in, in, in my younger years, Eastman Kodak, was going into bankruptcy. Eastman Kodak had, em, had employed in their heyday somewhere around 144,000 people. And so you can see how this, this transformation of our economy is impacting the types of businesses that are being built and, and how they're being built. This guy represents uh, the U Ukrainian half of the duo of founders of WhatsApp. Raise your hand if you're familiar with WhatsApp. Any, any WhatsApp users in, in the audience? Thank you. And so this company, just a matter of weeks ago, was sold for about 19 billion, acquired for 19 billion from Facebook. Did they have hundreds of employees? Thousands of employees? No, they had about 55. But it's using the technology that's available to them, collaborating, doing the things that we're about to look at, that allow these companies to go out and acquire something like, in, in WhatsApp's case, something like 400 million customers around the world applying a solution, a creative solution, that this young man from, from the Ukraine, when he came here uh, to the United States, he said, I just want a simple way to communicate with my family back home. And, and I'm not getting it through, through the current texting uh, or, or any, any other services that are available. I'm going to create something that gives me a simple ability to communicate with my family. And so... These are, these are strong models. Now, this, this may, some of you may feel like I'm, I'm pointing at the Le, LeBron James and Michael Jordan you know, uh, equivalents in our modern economy, but the fact is, 
with creativity, with the factors that the, the principles that we're going to look at in just a second, any of you in this audience with the right amount of creativity and courage can accomplish whatever you dream up. Now, there are five things that are supporting this kind of, this kind of opportunity in our economy. The first is, is connectivity, bandwidth. I mentioned it. Uh, you know, AT&T, as, as, a, as a sponsor of this session, is, is appropriate because AT&T represents an industry, the telecommunications industry in the U.S. in 2012 uh, invested something like $88 billion in, in capital into, into infrastructure. That's mind-blowing, guys. They, 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 that, that sector is in, a, is in a league of their own in terms of investing in infrastructure uh, in the United States. And so this, this picture represents a piece of equipment, a piece of broadband equipment that five years ago would have been the size of a, of a, of a truck, of a pickup truck. And we'd hang those on, on big towers that you see, and, 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 and that's kind of what's gotten us to this point with our, our mobile broadband. Well, this kind of equipment is allowing us to be connected with high-speed broadband anywhere and everywhere because it can go anywhere and everywhere. The second dynamic is the cloud. The cloud is allowing us to have access to computing power and processing speed that used to, if you had an idea for a business that required computing storage and, and, and processors, you would have to spend tens or hundreds of thousands just to be prepared. If you got that first few, those first few customers, you had to be prepared with that equipment. Well, now the cloud allows us to buy those services just as needed. I mean, for tens and, and hundreds of dollars instead of hundreds of thousands of dollars. So you've got the broadband that allows you to go approach a market that is global, that is everywhere, and now you've got the ability to have applications that are supported by services that are, that are costing you, you tens or hundreds of, of dollars instead of hundreds of thousands. Big data, the amount of data that's created in our, in our economy is just, is just mind-boggling. But it also creates opportunities. If you think about Facebook and you think about Twitter and, so, and, and how we're constantly pushing data through those applications and we're, and we're constantly searching Google and we're making purchases through Amazon or, or any sites, all this data is, is now being uh, made readily available. So when you have an idea about a business, you can access that big data and figure out through Google searches and through Facebook uh, services what, what your audience looks like, what they, what they, where they go, what they buy, what their interests are. This, this slide represents the crowd. We talked about crowdfunding earlier. The crowd, in, to me, represents a, another two C words, which is collaborate, co collaboration and commodi commoditization, if, if that's the right word. Collaboration, you can work, partner with people in the, uh, across the country working on similar ideas, or ideas that are different, but man, I could use part of that. And also, from a commodity standpoint, things like legal documents that used to cost, again, tens of thousands or thousands of dollars to develop to help support a new business. Now there's somebody who's somewhere in California or in Alabama who, who you can connect with, and, and, and they'll say, you know, I tried that, or I did, I did that, and here, here are the legal components that I use for that. Here's the intellectual property rights that, that I needed to procure with that. I'll, I'll, I'll share that with you. So we're, we're making commodities from things that in the past have been major barriers to entry when you were looking at inventing yourself a job. Then there's the fifth and final component of this, of this dynamic economy where it is possible for you to create your job, and it's the device aspect of the economy. The fact that all of us, and increasingly nearly everybody in the world, is walking around with a smart mobile device in their pocket. It again means that you have the connectivity to reach them, but they have the device to do something once you reach them. So those are the five dynamics. Let me just now talk briefly, given, given this market situation, unprecedented in the history of the modern world, I can't say that enough because it is, guys. And you've got the opportunity to create your job. Now let's talk about common qualities of those who actually do that. And, and this goes back also to, to, the, to the two companies we looked at briefly just a second ago. Creativity. 
All of you in this room basically stood up when I asked that question, have you ever had an idea of how you could make the world a better place? So you possess that. That's the starting block. That's the building block. Then you have to keep things simple. Sometimes those of us who are more creative can be better at keeping things simple because things just make sense to us. And so you see things. You can break things down in their most basic sense, and technology also helps with that. But also sometimes we can be sidetracked when we're creative. We can, we, if we like to create, then we like to build something, and then we're moving on to the next thing. But in terms of business, you have to, stay, you have to keep it simple, and you have to focus. That becomes a challenge over the long haul for many people as they're building a business or inventing themselves a job, staying focused on what matters most. Two more things. Love. That may have been, been the last thing you would expect me to, to say in this presentation, but you, you need to love your idea. You need to love what you're doing, and you need to love the people you're doing it with and the people you're doing it for. With that ingredient, and that turns out to be something of a secret ingredient in business creation, because if you have that ingredient, it draws others to you because you're passionate about what you're doing, you're passionate about what you're creating, and it brings others to you, and they, they want to they wanna figure out how to get part of, of that kind of passion and that kind of creativity. Finally, you have to be courageous. This is probably the most difficult part of inventing yourself a job. We had a question in the, in the earlier, uh, after the earlier panel, said, what if I have an idea and, and everybody's against it? Do I give up? Well, as a, as a creator of your own job, every day is gonna, you're gonna be required to answer that question. When you get out of bed, Starting a, a business, creating your job, inventing your job, is a lot like going to war. And what, what do they say about war? It's people find religion when they go to war, right? You have to find religion and you have to be cor courageous if you're going to invent yourself a job. Because when you get out of bed in the morning, if you're like me, you say a prayer and say, God, help me. I can't do this on my own. Show me the way. And you have to find courage deep within you to say, I can do this, and I'm going to have 10, 20, 30 things today get in my way, but I can do this. And if you're also like me, you lock arms with those, whether it's in your head or literally you've got people around you you can lock arms with, and you can do a little bit of a warrior dance to start your day. And I'm going to give you some help with that right here. This is the New Zealand All Blacks rugby team and their pregame ritual which is helpful when you're creating yourself a job. Oh, I guess I need to advance. When you get out of bed in the morning, if you're dedicated to inventing yourself a job, whether it's that, that warrior's dance or whatever it takes, that's the kind of courage that it takes. Uh, even with the, the resources that you have available in our economy, it's that courage, it's that creativity, it is that ability to keep things simple and be focused, and it is that ability to love what you do and who you're doing it with and who you're doing it for that is going to allow you to invent yourself a job. Thank you very much.